Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to give my experience and thoughts about using NVIDIA hardware on Linux. It's been almost three years since I've started using Linux again, and in that time, I've used a wide range of distributions with varying desktop environments, all using my NVIDIA GTX 1080 which is currently connected to a pair of 1080p 60Hz monitors. Like many people, I was hoping to upgrade my GPU last year with the release of the 30 series. But of course, the shortage of affordable GPUs has continued in the latter part of 2021. Who knows, maybe 2022 is the year I finally replace my almost 7 year old card. So I primarily use my GPU for two things. Uh, the first is gaming, and the second is encoding slash recording content for this channel. I've mentioned this before, but I was initially a bit apprehensive about using my GPU on Linux as I'd heard horror stories about cards crashing, poor performance and general bad experience all around. So for someone coming across from Windows, I saw little point in even trying Linux if that's what I was going to expect. Reality of course was completely different, and to this day I've yet to see a single crash caused by using the Nvidia GPU on Linux. Yes, there are some drawbacks, which I'm going to cover shortly, but overall, with the correct driver installed, my experience of NVIDIA on Linux has been relatively positive. So in Windows, you have VSync enabled by default, and this means that whenever you're using the operating system, in theory, you're not going to encounter any screen tearing. The exception to the rule, of course, is whenever you launch a video game, as at that point, VSync is disabled, and it's left to the application itself to resolve any screen tearing. Most Linux desktop environments such as GNOME and KDE Plasma do not support vSync by default, especially when it, whenever a full screen application is launched. In fact, KDE Plasma will attempt to prevent screen tearing by using its Windows Manager slash Compositor KWIN, but this is disabled once a full screen application is launched. GNOME on the other hand supports direct Windows redirect, and this is the same method that Windows uses whenever full screen applications are launched. So the solution is to enable vSync globally using a function built into the NVIDIA driver called Force Composition Pipeline. Once you've enabled that, you'll ensure that you're not going to encounter any screen tear regardless of what you're doing on the operating system. And this is something in my experience that I found is required regardless of what Linux distribution or desktop environment you're using. So with the release of Proton, it grabbed my attention as this promised a straightforward method of playing your Steam library on Linux without the hassle of maintaining and configuring wide. And with our experience of gaming on Linux, and by that I mean playing Windows developed games on Linux, has been positive. I found that performance is good, I get solid 1080p 60fps for most of my games in my game library. The exceptions were games that utilise EAC or Battleye anti-cheat, or used DirectX graphic APIs. The latter in particular I found that performance could be significantly worse than Windows, with my particular hardware, and from what I understand, this is something that cannot really be restored. I mentioned before that I've used multiple distributions with varying desktop environments, but I tend to stick with either KDE Plasma or GNOME. GNOME is a great solid experience with NVIDIA hardware. I found that animations are fluid, all my software works correctly, I get no latency stuttering when open applications, and even Wayland through X Wayland allows me to play some games. Granted, if I do this, screen tearing does return. KD Plasma, on the other hand, is a train wreck. It's honestly the worst experience I've ever had with a desktop environment on Linux. I typically find that applications will frequently stutter when opening them. This happens if I maximise a window, or even drag a window from one monitor to another. And what typically happens is the window gets stuck between the two displays. Just for reference, this is something that does not happen with my Dell laptop, which uses Intel graphics and is also running the latest version of Plasma. I tried diagnosing the issue and I've concluded it's something to do with KWIN and the NVIDIA driver, as if one of the two is disabled, I don't have any issues. Again, this is a real shame because I really like Plasma as a desktop environment. It just does not want to work smoothly with my hardware, even if I change the compositor method to XRenderer, which uses the CPU instead of the GPU to render. Uh, I've also tried Plasma Nvidia and Wayland, but if you do that you're going to have a bad time, at least of this video being released. I mentioned the second thing I do with my GPU is recording footage for this channel and rendering slash encoding videos. For that I use NVENC and it works just the same as on Windows, in which I can play games at 1080p 60fps and then encode them at the same time at upscaled 1440p 60fps. 
and I do all this through OBS Studio. Honestly, if you're going to look at recording or streaming on Linux and Windows, you really need to be using NVENC. So until AMD come up with something that's just as efficient, I really don't see myself switching to Team Red anytime soon. So in conclusion, using GNOME with NVIDIA hardware on Linux has been relatively painless for me. In fact, the only sticking point that I've still got is the lack of screen tearing prevention outside of the box. But as I mentioned, it's only a couple of clicks away. Anyway, that was my thoughts and experience of using NVIDIA hardware on Linux over the last couple of years. Has your experience been the same? Has it been completely different to mine? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now!